Starting with our star, we'll watch at half our normal viewing speed so you can see the beauty of the eruptive action on the north. The sunspot group moving across the central portion of the north has been sputtering plasma, although thankfully a good bit of it remained in the corona or rained back down towards the surface. We did get more flaring activity from them, but again the higher peak just barely cracked into M-class range. We can see the plasma activity much more in the 304 angstrom view, with the early morning activity from yesterday occurring in rapid succession and then last night's larger surge as well. The good news is that again much was contained within the corona and there are only faint CME signatures. The enlil spiral does indicate at least one of the faint plasma clouds is heading at Earth, unlikely to cause more than just auroras and some minor geomagnetic disruptions. The sunspots responsible for this uptick are now heading towards the limb. From there, it will be more challenging for them to fire a CME at Earth, but more likely for them to use the interplanetary magnetic fields to send high-energy particles along the flux tubes within the Sun's current sheet. Right now, the solar wind is elevated a bit due to the coronal hole stream, but at only minor levels, moderate plasma speed, leaving geomagnetic conditions relatively quiet for now. We are also watching the southern hemisphere as the large dark snake-like plasma filament has eruptive potential and would produce a sizable CME if it releases. Moving on to quakes, another seven-pointer in this region, luckily very deep and offshore. But speaking of deep, three notable blood echoes struck the southern half of the Americas and indicate that larger activity may be coming across the ocean soon. We've seen that Oceania to Americas pattern several times in the past. Let's go next.